definitely com uh, connected to a global warming? Potentially it's connected to that. Potentially. I mean, these, these, these have been happening already. What's new, perhaps, is the fact that the winds may actually be weakening. That could be due to warming in the Arctic, changing the atmospheric circulation, therefore making it more likely for that cold, dense air to escape the vortex, spill down to us. All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. We played that clip for you yesterday as well. Charlie Rose on CBS uh, with Brian Walsh, a senior editor at Time Magazine, talking about the, uh, the polar vortex and, and the horrifically cold weather all over this country. And, uh, and, and they're not even, not even making believe. They're not even saying, is this due to climate change? Is this, due to, is this definitely due to global warming? Well, uh, you know, probably. We're not sure, but probably. Uh, joining us now... <laughs> to talk about all aspects of this is Joe Pistardi, meteorologist, chief forecaster for Weather Bell uh, Analytics. Hello, Joe. Boy, would I love to debate a guy like that. I'm oh telling you. Gosh. Uh, first of all, what does the senior, what, what does a senior editor of Time Magazine know about science anyway? Well, it, 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 it's, you, you got to understand, I'm almost speechless that people are trying to pull us. So though Joe DeLeo and I, uh, Weather Bell uh, predicted a very cold winter and said, You're kidding around. We said, Watch what happens if this cold winter we're predicting materializes. People will blame global warming. And the reason we predicted a cold winter was we lined up some patterns that we saw in the past that we've seen before and say, Okay, look out, here it comes. All right. But here's the thing the fact that he would make that statement. So, what about all the other record cold events that have occurred? How come they weren't global warming? So you have, let's say New York City broke a record low yesterday. That's one day out of 31 in January. How come this day we can identify that perhaps global warming was involved? Let me give this guy a little clue. The reason why there's some melting sea ice in the Arctic is because we are in the warm version of the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. All right? That's what happens when the Atlantic warms. You will by the way, by the way, Joe, could you spell that? No, only kidding. Only kidding. Okay. Okay, it's, it's a good water cooler term. <laughs> if you will notice that the area below normal in sea ice is on the Atlantic side to the north of the uh, to the north of Europe and Asia, all right, because that warm current gets up there. When that happens, there's feedback in the atmosphere that forces blocking. In fact, most meteorological weather nuts love this stuff because we know it means certain weather patterns will set up that make our job very exciting and very challenging. So we're sitting here waiting for this type of thing to happen because we've seen it before, lined up the patterns of the past and say, okay, when this happens, guess what is going to happen? In addition, we have a, uh, you know, with the sun, we have a low geomagnetic field. We call it the AP index, the AP geomagnetic index. That is also correlated to blocking. So the state of the Atlantic in relation to the Pacific Ocean, all right, and that what's going on up above is correlated to more than normal blocking. So what happens, you get these things to happen. Now, let me ask this guy a question. I know he's not here, but what about January 17, 1977? Oh, by the way, wasn't that the winter that your folks were pushing the new ice age? Yeah, how about that? Polar vortex right through the Great Lakes, <laughs> so-called so -called coldest day of the century. I know you weren't around then, but what about uh, the day Ronald Reagan was inaugurated? Chicago, minus 28, coldest temperature ever, polar vortex in the Great Lakes. So I, I can go over dozens of examples like this. Believe me, I used to draw these, these kind of weather patterns in class when I was doodling. Because I, if I was bored with the class, I'd say, okay, I'm going to form this block up over Greenland, send this down into the United States. Oh, wait, wait, and, Joe Bastardi was a doodler? Uh, if, if I was bored in, uh, bored in one of my history classes, not my meteorology classes, those were like a track race. <laughs> so, so, but what I'm saying is, what we saw, I, I wrote a paper on whatabell.com nine days before called Anatomy of an Arctic Attack showing why this was going to happen. In addition, late December, or the middle and late part of December, uh, some of my friends and I, uh, 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 clients of ours, but they're also great meteorologists, were chit-chatting on the phone. One of my buddies in Houston said, you know what, this pattern looks like to deliver the Arctic vortex into the Great Lake. I said, yeah, well, this is what we're looking for. We kept talking about January 1994 was one of our analog seasons this year. What air mass was this similar to that people brought up? January 1994. That was the yeah. last time it was this cold in the Midwest with this wind. So we're seeing this a month away, and then this guy says it's global warming. I will tell you this. We made a pretty good prediction on this cold winter, as we've had so far. We made a good prediction on this Arctic vortex. 
We did not factor in CO2 at all. I don't know where he gets this stuff. But he, that, that, well, they were talking about something along the lines of of uh, uh, of the uh, the warmth, okay, pushing the kind of pushing the in simplistic terms, as I interpret it in my meteorolo meteorolo meteorological uh, simplistic mind, uh, the like the warmth was pushing the vortex down to to no, us. What, what, what happens is when there's blocking that occurs, or, you know, because you want to maintain a, a, a temperature, a certain temperature of the equator of the pole. If it's warmer up at the pole, the colder air tends to slide south. But that's all part of the natural process of the atmosphere. All this is part of natural processes of the ocean. The Pacific Ocean went into its warm cycle in the late 70s, stayed warm till about 2007. Since it flipped into the colder cycle, you've been seeing the Earth's temperature gradually break down a little bit, come down just a little bit over the last four years after leveling off. Why did it level off? Because the Pacific warming and the Atlantic warming added heat to the atmosphere. Hello, when the ocean warms, guess what's going to happen? But the problem now is the Atlantic is in its warm mode, Pacific in its cold right. mode. That promotes a lot of blocking. Eventually what's going to happen, and you, and you folks better wake up out there because these rolling blackouts with this cold wave should be an alarm signal. Eventually what happens is we go back to the 60s and 70s. Once the Atlantic cools, we're out of the big hurricane cycle. That's what will happen. And then you'll start seeing winters like we had in the 60s and 70s. And I'll tell you what, I don't think our economy or our electric grid would handle those kind of consistently cold winters. All right, so let me... So well, let me, let me, we're talking uh, to Joe Bastardi, meteorologist, chief forecaster for Weather Bell Analytics here on the Steve Molesberg show. Let, let, I'm very, I've been very uh, uh, afraid of the power grid going down for various reasons, whether it's a, uh, uh, an EMP, uh, uh, e e EMG, yep. um, whatever, uh, attack of when, if they uh, launch North Korea or anybody goes out in the middle of the Atlantic and launches a, a nuclear weapon into the sky, uh, they could take down our grid, whether it's a cyber attack on our grid, uh, whether it's, as you say, uh, faltering by natural causes, so to speak, overpowering it. Um, and, and that's been on my mind for a long, long time, and people do have to get ready for that. But let's talk about the sun, because I just read a, a story yesterday that uh, the sun is doing all kinds of things, which you could better explain than I can, and that threatens our telephone communications, our power grid, uh, and that could really mess us up, too. How, how dangerous is that right now? I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on that type of thing, but what I understand is that when you have relatively low sunspot activity relative to the max, and we're at a sunspot max now, there are times when uh, the sun all of a sudden will uh, uh, let forth what we call coronal mass ejection, and those things are for the astronomers to predict, and they do have effects, especially with the with a uh, society that relies so much on all the different high-tech things we've got going on today. What I look at uh, and what I do is that AP geomagnetic field, where when you have low, geoma uh, no, low geomagnetic index, it's correlated in the wintertime with increased blocking over the pole. You can go back and look at all the examples. So I'm giving my friend at Time Magazine a hint as to what he should be looking at before he says what he says, like, uh, like we just said. And so there's increased blocking when that happens in those winters. Winters. And it's something we're going to have to deal with more and more in the coming years because if the sun indeed does fall asleep, uh, as a lot of people are thinking it's going to, you can see the reason why the low sunspot cycles have been correlated with uh, very, very cold winters across the northern hemisphere. So, yeah. uh, that, you know, that's the Victorian era, which is bad because uh, it means that Victoria's Secret, instead of selling <laughs> what they sell, will have to sell big, bulky, Russian bathrobes, you know, from the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the stuff you see the Aeroflot, the old Aeroflot stewardess is wearing. That's, what, that's what's going to happen, so get ready. No, I'll, I'll be a facetious, but the fact is the sun does have some effect. you gotta, you got to, look, I try to tell people all the time, you do the math. The sun, the ocean, stochastic events such as uh, volcanic activity against 0.04% of the atmosphere. I mean, do you, do you really think that the 0.04% really has a chance to send the atmosphere off, into, you know, off a cliff, especially since we've had ice ages at 7,000 parts per million of CO2, and we've had very, very warm times at 250 parts per million. There have been glaciers to New York City, vivid rainforest in Wisconsin. At one time, the Gulf of Mexico covered all the way up to St. Louis. Right, and so, this, is all, this is all before... Carbon and footprints and, and all that. Time magazine had their ice right, right. back in the Right, right. And they weren't alone. It wasn't just Time magazine. I know you're, you're picking on them because of Brian Walsh and yeah, what well, he I'm said. I'm picking on because the guy has to look. 
look, I'm accountable for bad forecasts. In the private sector, you get fired. But what I'm saying is, why are you – look, if someone punches you in the face five times, Steve, do you sit there and stick your tongue out at them? I mean, what, what, what happens to this? You, you just be quiet about the cold weather. Wait till it gets warm again. I guarantee you there will be some heat waves this summer. It's happened before. It'll happen again. Then you can start pushing the issue there. That's it or whatever. Or you could have gone, here's what you should have done. So do you see that patch of warm water over the Pacific Ocean? There. That's what's causing the cold weather. Because that is correlated. That warm patch in the Northeast Pacific is correlated with more ridging and more blocking on that side, of the western part of North America over the pole, and that sends cold air masses down. Then that says, hey, if it wasn't that warm there, that would have, you know, all this stuff, or the, the, warmth in the, the warmth in Eastern Europe. But instead, they sit there and talk about cold weather. And the, the whole interesting thing to me is, they don't seem to have looked at what has happened before. But Joe, I mean, they don't. Joe, I, I believe they know, and I believe they have an agenda. I, I can't believe, no, I can't. I, I believe they have an agenda, but I cannot believe. Well, what about these guys? Have, but what, Joe? What about these guys who went out in the ice? Uh, the, the you know and got stuck in the. Thing. Do you know that my company actually helped get them out? Well, yeah, but, but they're, they're going around. Uh, they've been interviewed, and they're going around saying how this ice, get this, this ice was old ice. So it had not, so there is still global oh, warming you know because this is, a, but I thought all the old ice was melting. Oh, it's old ice because the new ice is building up. It pushed it out so far. They were ready. Antarctica is breaking daily records. I tweet it all the time. Here's the latest thing. I can't even believe it. It's like every single day it breaks a daily high record. Yeah. But you know what's interesting about that? Yeah, you know, so, oh, well, this was the warmest of ever, ever. If you were bench pressing 400 pounds every single day and you bench press 400.2, yeah, I just bench more weight than I ever did. Does it mean you're going to be bench pressing 500 right, pounds? Right, 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 right. Now, yeah, the I... other thing, too, is that whole warmest November ever was based on one of their scales. The satellite scales don't show that. The NCEP reanalysis doesn't show it. So uh, there are a bunch of things that don't show that, but they will use of course. to get their hands on. Of course. It's amazing. Uh, Joe, always enlightening and entertaining uh, talking to you, my friend. Hey, 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 Brian, Brian, if you're listening, call me. Call me when you're talking <laughs> weather. And enjoy the weather, Brian. It's the only weather you got. There you, that's a good one. I like that. All right, Brian. Uh, Brian, I'm calling you Brian. Now, Joe, thank you very much. Joe Pistardi, meteorologist Bye, and chief forecaster for Weather Bell Analytics here on the uh, Steve Malsberg Show. Just, you know, the, the chutzpah involved in these people, you know, calling this global warming. We are freezing our butts off. Pipes are bursting. And, 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 and they're talking about, they're blaming it on global warming. Like I said, they don't even call it climate change. They're, they're so in your face that it's global warming. Uh, global warming implies, or, or, or by, by definition, means warming. It's freezing. How do you come to that unless you're just, you know, dishonest or brain dead? Or maybe, you, maybe it's brain freeze without the ice cream. There you go. I just thought of that one. All right, folks. <laughs> I like that one. All right, lots more to get to. Lots ahead right here. You know where you are. You're on the Steve Malsberg Show. We'll be joined by Bill Crystal, Charles Hurt, Congressman Louis Gohmert. All that ahead. News, Max TV, and radio. The Steve.